Hey guys, welcome to a quick edition of my thrifty finds. So I went out in the local classifieds because I needed a PS2 keyboard. Nothing fancy, but I have a system here that doesn't allow you to use a USB keyboard to get into the BIOS or pretty much any pre-boot stuff. And I need to change the boot order, um, change a couple settings. I'd like to flash the BIOS, so I needed a PS2 keyboard. And someone was selling one, and I went over. It was only one euro, so I thought that's perfect. I really wouldn't want to spend more than that on an ancient keyboard. Um, so there we go. But then while I was over there, he said, hey, I've got a whole box of stuff you can look at, and maybe you'll find something interesting. And interesting I did find. Uh, this graphics card looked interesting to me, uh, mostly because it has DVI, TV out, and VGA. I assumed it would be a... Um, I mean, it could have been anywhere in the GeForce 2 on up range. Um, and while I was out to lunch, I looked up that model number there. Turns out this is a GeForce FX, FX 5600 uh, with 128 megs of RAM. That's a really nice find. And it only cost me one euro. Uh, well, it'll, it's a nice find if it works. We'll find out. It actually looks to be in fine shape. Uh, the caps look okay. Um, I'm going to try it out. But... Yeah, for one euro, I'm very happy with that. Um, and then there was another box with something else I I've been wanting, and that is another 3Com 3C905. This is the C edition, which means it has built-in boot ROM. Um, and this one was, I think, the last one in the 905 lineup, uh, which is half height. Um, the thing that really caught my eye though was this cable. This is the cable you need to do wake on LAN um, on motherboards that don't support PCI 2.2, or is it 2.1? Anyway, you need this cable for older systems that don't support wake on LAN directly through the PCI bus. So this is perfect. Also only cost me one euro. And the 905 line is my favorite line of um, network cards. And if you were wondering, People have favorite lines of network cards. They do, so you should find out what yours is. This one's mine. This goes nicely into my lineup here. So this is the, the C. Um, this is also a C, but this is obviously full height. Um, functionally, they're the same, as far as I remember. Yeah, they're the same, but this one's obviously full height. It does have the option for the connector for the wake on LAN cable, but I didn't have one. Um, so now I do. That's very exciting. Uh, one big difference you'll notice though, you see the 3Com logo there? That was the new one right before they went totally defunct. And that's the old classic one. I quite like the classic one. Um, this also goes nicely in my collection with, this is the 905B. The big difference with the B, uh, you can see it has a socket for putting the boot ROM. So it didn't come with one. Um, I've ordered a chip, I'm still waiting for it, um, that you can flash with a custom boot ROM. Uh, this one's nice because it has 32 pins, so you can actually flash the EEPROM directly on the card without using an EEPROM programmer. Um, but yeah, look at that. Got the whole family. Well, I don't have the A, but I don't really want the A because it doesn't support boot ROMs. Um, so there we go. Now I've got all three 905 cards that I've wanted. Um, so, nice. So now I'm gonna put these in the system and see if they work. All right, so here's my test rig here. This is the Athlon XP that I picked up a couple weeks ago uh, from a local classified for free, which is awesome. And it actually works fine, um, but I'm gonna upgrade it a little bit now. So I'm gonna take out the old graphics card. This one is a Matrox G450 dual head VGA. Um, a nice card um, these were awesome for dual head VGA workstations but I don't like VGA because I don't have a CRT and as far as I'm concerned you only use VGA with CRTs I have no interest in using it with an LCD you end up with bad picture especially at higher resolution um, also this is gonna be rubbish for any kind of gaming so that is and in with the new our FX 5600. All right, pop that guy in.
Okay, nice. Um, that's good. Now we'll put our new 3Com 3C Nano 5 into this case here. This thing is very full of PCI stuff. It's got uh, some advanced sound card. It's got a PCI fan or a slot fan cooler. Um, it's got a SCSI controller that I put in the other day. I haven't got to use it yet because I needed that keyboard. Um, and now it's got a nice new network card too. So now we've got our new bits in. I'm going to plug in DVI, hooray, because we're using an LCD, so we should be using DVI uh, power. And PS2 keyboard. I've been needing this for so long. Ah. And a LAN cable. Hello, there we go. LAN cable. All right. Moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Oh, yeah, it works. You never know with a graphics card that came out of a huge bin filled with graphics cards. But hey, that is really exciting. All right, so there's my SCSI controller doing its thing. And we should get an error about no boot device. Ah, here we go. That network card's working, so it's trying to boot up with PXE, which normally would work, except I just turned off my computer that was running PXE. Um, I was actually thinking I would have to go into the BIOS to change the boot order to put BXE, PXE in there, but I suppose it just is the last one on the list, so it's working. Um, hang on, let me turn that back on. Cool. So long story computer. short, I gave up on the PXE stuff because it was being a total pain in the neck to get XP installed from a Windows 7 PE. Uh, I, it kind of booted properly, but didn't run the installer properly. I don't know why, um, and I just gave up and did it from a CD. It's not, not like me to give up, but... I wanted to move on. Good enough. Okay, so I finally gave up on PXE installation of Windows XP because it was just giving me too much of a headache. So I just did it the old-fashioned way off a of CD-ROM. Um, along the way, I made a couple modifications. Um, one thing here, uh, so I've got a SCSI hard drive, which is awesome. Uh, 10,000 RPM, 73 gig, perfect for this box. Um, and that, of course, required a SCSI controller. This is an Adaptech 2940 Ultra Wide. That was a really popular SCSI controller in the 90s. Um, one thing you'll see here is this controller has an activity light on it. Uh, so does the hard drive, actually. Um, but by default, the controller has no way of telling the main system that there's activity. So what you have to do is there's actually a header here to connect your own, uh, to connect either the front panel LED or some motherboards have support for creating like a connection between the SCSI controller and the motherboard. Uh, this motherboard doesn't have it. So what I did is I just connected the turbo LED to the SCSI controller activity light. So when you come up in the front here, of course, there's no activity right now because I need there to be some. Oh, there it is in the middle. So now my turbo light is SCSI activity, which is pretty cool. Um, I also, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but I also found the connection for the wake on LAN, and I'm trying to get that working too. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that setup. Here, I'll put the microphone into the computer so you can hear that SCSI drive doing its thing. I love those. SCSI drives are just special. So uh, yeah, we'll check back in here once Windows XP is done installing. So now with Windows XP actually set up, it was time to 
see how this new graphics card works out. So first things first, I tried out Serious Sam. I loved this, this game back in the day. It was a pretty mindless game where you just run around and shoot things and I guess after a while it probably had the potential to get boring but certainly high school me had no problem playing this for ages. Um, you can see up in the corner there, or sorry, in kind of in the upper right hand third, there's FPS counter. I've got this running at 1280 by 1024, which is the native resolution of this monitor, um, because well, I wanted to see if that would work, and it does. So for the most part, when you're running around, you're getting pretty close to 60 FPS, which is awesome. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if I'm CPU bound. This thing only has an Athlon XP 1800. Um, considering upgrading that, but I wanted to see how it performed without any upgrades, and this actually worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, game is exactly as I remember it. Nice and silly and fun. So, yeah, excellent graphics card pickup today. So, next up, I wanted to give a try to Quake 3. Um, this is the GOG edition. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes any difference for performance, but I doubt it. Um, this was another one of my favorites from the back in the day. Uh, it's running again at 1280 by 1024 native resolution of the display and I've got the frame counter up in the upper right hand corner and yeah for the most part this thing's cruising at 90 FPS which is excellent. Very happy with that. Um, I was kind of terrible at this but I was also sitting on the floor while playing because one of my objectives for the weekend was to buy a desk. I didn't manage to do that because I spent most of my time playing with computer stuff. So yeah, I was playing on the floor. But yeah, it worked out really well. Um, when this was all over though, I opened up the computer to, I wanted to clean out the graphics card a bit, and I noticed it was roasting hot in there. So I actually took the graphics card heatsink off and re-greased it, cleaned out the fan, uh, to see if that would do any better. I'll show you what that looked like. Yeah, so I wasn't able to take a video of me cleaning off the old thermal paste. It was kind of difficult getting the old heat sink and fan off of the old uh, off the GPU, but there you can see the bare chip there, the FX5600 chip. And here are the current specs of the machine now with my new SCSI controller, SCSI hard drive, and brand new graphics card that I got for one euro. So the next thing to do will be to upgrade the memory. This motherboard can take one and a half gigs, which would be perfect, I think. Um, I might hunt around for a new processor, um, but this one's okay for now, I think. Um, so this is shaping up to be a pretty decent XP gaming rig. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.